Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning. Thanks for continuing in for your word for the day to Calvary. It is great to be with you today. You know, as we continue in looking through the life of Jesus in the book of Matthew, we get to the heavier, more difficult part. Uh, and this is the, the final hours of Jesus' life. And what's so fascinating is you read the Gospels, they each have a different pace to them. Some of them move really quickly. Mark is known for, for being the shortest Gospel, and he's always like, and then this happened, and then this, with not much filler. But what's universal across all four of them is that when they get to the final hours, the final days of Jesus' life, things slow down. They don't want you to miss anything. And that's really what's uh, the, the lesson there is that as, as there's more detail, they're saying, hey, all of this is significant. And today, as we look at Matthew chapter 26, we see Jesus entering the trial portion uh, after his arrest. And I say trial that way because this wasn't a formal uh, or, or a proper legal trial. It was formal, but it wasn't proper. It wasn't legal. It wasn't ethical in how they conducted it. And I think there's some characteristics of Jesus that we need to see and, and learn from as he walked through this process. And I believe that the words of Scripture are powerful. So we're going to read this section together today and, and just soak this in. Starting in verse 57, it says, Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders had gathered. And Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. And at last two came and said, This man said, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What do these men testify against you then? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said, you have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, he has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? And they answered, he deserves death. And they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ, who is it that struck you? Now, there's a couple things that I, I want us to take note of as we look at this. And the first is that Jesus' silence is powerful. As these false witnesses, as these people came and made up accusations against him to try to lead towards this sentence of death, Jesus is silent. You know, and it, 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 it is powerful a huge testimony to his character, to his restraint, to his self-control, to not argue, to not try to navigate out uh, verbally of this, but to acknowledge that he had prayed, Lord, not my will, but your will be done just hours before in the garden. And now he is living out that prayer of saying, I'm going to submit to your will, Father. But also it's a fulfillment of scripture. Book Isaiah uh, chapter 53 says, Like a lamb that is led to its slaughter, like a sheep that's before its shear is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Jesus fulfilling scripture and obeying his Father and walking in submission all in one there. I think the other thing to take note of there is his charge of blasphemy. I mean, they, they, they accuse him of blasphemy because he could tear down the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. And if they're talking about the temple building, that is pretty absurd to tear down that building and rebuild it in three days. But of course, he's talking about his own body. He's talking about his death and resurrection that they are helping to create a fulfillment of these words. He's essentially uh, arrested and charged with death for telling the truth. An ironic twist of fate here. But see, as we look at this, we have to wonder, what are we going to do with this information? Because he is here on trial. Someone had to decide with the information that was presented to us, what will we do with it? Now, they led to the point of saying, oh, he needs to be put to death. With the information we have, what are we going to do with it? 
Are we going to see Jesus as just a good teacher, as just someone that has some cool ideas? Are we going to see him as some kook from history? Are we going to see him as the actual Son of God and Savior of the world? Are we going to decide to follow him and trust him with our life, with our eternity, with our obedience? Because just like there was a decision to be made in this trial, each one of us in our life has a decision to make. And my prayer is that you would see Jesus as your Savior, that you would lay everything down in a desire to follow and serve him with your life. Because the outcome of that is always going to be incredible fruit in your life and a, a transformed life by God's power that you could never imagine. So today, what will you do with the news of Jesus? Will you accuse him of telling the truth? Um, will you deny his power? Will you turn away? Or will you trust in him? My prayer is that you would trust and follow him with your life. And I hope that uh, as we approach Easter, it gives you an incredible reason to celebrate the risen Savior. We'll see you next time, Calvary. Have a great day.